Hey everyone, back in LA. Gonna be playing some more 5-5 five five today. Uh, today's special because it's my birthday, but more importantly, I'm with my girlfriend and uh, she's gonna be hanging out, watching me and seeing the action. So yeah, it should be pretty fun. I'll uh, let you guys know how it goes. So about 30 minutes into my session, I realized the seat I'm at is awful for recording my hand and also the action on the table. And unfortunately, I had to exclude a lot of the footage I took before this hand. Big blind raises to $10, under the gun middle position and I call the $10. We have pocket nines and we've lost about 250 bucks almost at this point. Um, the button ends up three betting to $40 here. And the table has been bullying a lot with three bets and four bets. I have a pretty decent hand here. I think an opportunity to squeeze after I see the big blind under the gun and middle position call the 40 bucks. I speed up the video here, but I am thinking for quite some time on what I want to do. Uh, I'm getting pretty tired at this point of getting bullied out of pots, so I decide it's a decent hand here to squeeze, and uh, the position I'm in, I want to go ahead and take the chance. So I go ahead and shove uh, for about 235 effectively, and uh, the button snaps it off pretty quickly here and calls the 235. And now we're just waiting on the remaining three players to make their decision. The pot's already quite large. Um, I'm expecting maybe at least one more person to come in, um, but hoping that everyone else folds because I think with pocket nines, we have pretty decent chance of winning this pot heads up. So at this point, uh, big blind and under the gun both fold their hands and middle position takes a little bit of time to think, but also decides to fold. So now we are heads up against the button with pocket nines and the button shows ace eight suited. So the flop comes out two ten nine rainbow. We hit our set. Queen of spades comes out on the turn and on the river is a seven of spades. We take down a massive pot to come back up on the day, which is uh, much needed because we were in a bit of a hole there to start off the session down about $250, I think, um, at the very start. Just a lot of uh, misplays, I think, on my part, but also um, missed a lot of sets on the flop. And I know it's about like a 14% chance to hit it, so wasn't expecting it. But finally on this one, we do get ours. Finally, a better seat opens up for me to take so I could get some better footage at a different angle. Um, this pot's kind of weird. A lot of us just limp in and uh, I check here in the big blind with 9-5 offsuit. Uh, small blind checks to me on the flop, under the gun checks. And I think it checks all around and I have bottom pairs so I'm not really trying to do anything crazy here. Two of clubs comes out on the turn, small blind checks over to me and I go ahead and start off with a bet of $10. And under the gun calls the $10 bet I made. And now we're waiting for the middle position who also throws in the call. The button and the small blind fold, so now we're three players headed to the river with a uh, middle pair. And what comes out is a great card for us. It's a five of diamonds. We effectively make trips here. In this position, I'm confident we have the best hand and I want to see what I can bet here to get the most value. I think uh, there's a good chance we're against some cards like ace deuce or something, um, bottom pair with uh, maybe an ace higher or something along those lines. So I'm trying to think what would call me. I, I do think 25 was a bit aggressive because shortly after that, under the gun folds their hand. So we're just waiting for the last two players to make their decision here. I'm really hoping someone calls, but unfortunately middle position does make the fold. Um, and then also shortly after that, the hijack folds. I show my 9-5 offsuit uh, in a really weird pot. Uh, I wouldn't normally play that hand, but since I was in the big blind and it checked around to me, I went ahead and did it. Not too long after that hand, we pick up Jack-9 suited in the button with $475 behind. Middle position initially open raises to $10 and I 3 bet to $25 and small blind folds right after that. So action is on the big blind now who does end up becoming a pretty aggressive player throughout this video. He calls the $25. Middle position takes a very long time here to make a decision. So we are just waiting on that now. but. Um, until he makes his decision, I kind of wanted to go over this hand and figure out what I could have done differently. I think Jack-9 suited in the button is a decent spot to 3-bet in, um, especially with how the action at the table has been going. I think this is a decent hand and also I have a positional advantage, so that's why I ended up doing it. But curious to see what you guys think about the bet and the sizing I made. Um, middle position ends up actually raising to $50 here. so. I'm a bit regretting my uh, decision on the three bet, but I end up making the call at this point. I'm not going anywhere with Jack-9 suited on the button, and the big blind also isn't going anywhere, so we're off to the flop. I'm really hoping some spades come out on this flop, um, although someone could have the ace of spades. It is scary, but I think flush is a good chance of us winning this hand. Uh, anyways, the flop comes out 6-7-2 with two clubs. Both players check over to me, and I think we're in a decent spot here to make a bet. 
The checks and preflop action indicate to me that no one really made a hand from this flop, considering it's all low cards. There are two clubs which are a little scary, but I end up making the bet for $35 to test my opponents and see what their decision is here. So at this point, I'm really hoping nobody raises, and that doesn't last very long because the big blind raises to $75. And alarms are going off in my head thinking, does he have a set? And he's just slow playing so someone can catch up. And now when I bet, he just raised me, or maybe he even has an overpair in his hand, like uh, kings or queens. A uh, little nervous based off the preflop action at this point and that raise after the check, so um, not completely sure, but also I don't completely believe the guy either because he did make a lot of bluffs earlier, so uh, when the middle position folds, I think it's a pretty easy call here for me. See how the board develops and see, um, since I am in position, I think we do have some advantage here, so I go ahead and make the call and see how the board develops to uh, make my next decision. And the turn comes out a jack of clubs, which gives me some mixed feelings because we do make top pair, but if he was chasing a flush, he would have made it. The fact that he checked over to me makes me feel fairly confident that he did not make his flush, but I do check just to be safe because the player is a little bit sneaky and I don't want to get trapped here. But when I see the king of hearts come out, I know that is not a great card for me because he could have definitely made a pair of kings. Um, I want to see what he decides here. He might be repping um, ace king or something like that. Um, he ends up checking verbally, and I'm in uh, a bit of a decision here. Do I want to try to bet for value? Do I think I have the best hand? Or do I not want to raise uh, a risk a check raise or something like that? So he does play like that typically. I think the correct play here normally would probably be for me to just check. This player has played pretty sneaky throughout the day. He has been doing a lot of check raises, and I'm not really sure if I bet here something worse would call it. Um, I think the only thing that would call it is maybe like a pair of kings, or um, he might even do a check raise on me if he has a flush. Um, I ultimately don't think it's worth betting, so I, I make the check. Um, curious if you guys think I should have gone for a value bet here based off the story he was telling with the two checks. I definitely could have been um, in the right there with that decision. In hindsight, I was, but um, yeah, curious what you guys think if that was a uh, good check, or maybe I should have made a value bet. But no time to be sad about that, uh, we do make a pretty nice profit on that pot. Um, not too long after that, we do pick up king-queen offsuit in the button uh, with $550 behind and under the gun raises to $20. After it folds over to me, I do end up making the call for $20, hoping the big blind folds, which he does, and we are now heads up with a pretty nice uh, king-queen offsuit here in my pocket. And the flop comes out jack-queen-8. We make top pair. Um, I ultimately decide to check since he was the preflop aggressor. I let him do all the betting here and he does bet $20 and I make that call fairly quickly. Off to the turn, we see a ace of diamonds. This card is a little bit concerning because he could definitely make top pair here. Um, but when I check over to him and he checks back, I'm pretty confident that we probably have the best hand in this position, especially when the river comes out to two of diamonds. That's not improving anyone, um, so I go ahead and make a bet for $30 to see what he decides to do, and ultimately he does decide to fold. Um, I'm thinking maybe he had a low pocket pair or something and he missed the flop, so we take down another pretty decent sized pot. And about 15 minutes after that, we pick up 8-7 offsuit in the big blind with $600 behind. Um, this ends up being a pretty decent hand because everyone uh, limps over and I just check with 8-7 offsuit. I don't think it's appropriate to bet there, but I might be making mistakes by not betting against limpers, even with bad hands. Not totally sure how that works yet, but um, anyways, flop comes out 3-4-8, checks over to me, and I bet $10. Under the gun calls, middle position calls, and the rest folds, so now we are uh, three ways headed to the turn. We have top pair, we're in a pretty solid spot at this point, especially when the turn comes out a 8 of diamonds. We make trips and I immediately check hoping someone might try to bluff or improve on the river. Um, unfortunately both players check over and the river is a 3 of hearts. Uh, not sure if anyone would really improve from this card, but if someone has something like ace 3 or something, they definitely might try to take a shot at this with a full house. Uh, we do have the larger full house though, so I'm hoping someone might make this call here uh, with the ace 3 or something similar. I bet 20 bucks, and under the gun plus 1 makes a quick fold, middle position fold shortly after that. Uh, we take down a small size pot with trips, but um, ultimately pretty happy with how that played out for me being in the big blind with 8-7 um, offsuit. It's getting pretty late now and I can tell my girlfriend wants to go home so we pick up uh, pocket fours in the big blind with about $640 behind us. Once again the story of today was just a lot of limpers and I don't want to let that keep happening so 
I go ahead and open Reese to $20 here and under the gun calls that fairly quickly. I'm hoping we can get one more set mine here. That would be really great. Uh, cut off and the button both call. So we have a pretty decent sized pot, small blind folds. We are now four players headed to the flop. And I'm hoping one more time we hit the set and sure enough, we do. 943 comes out with two spades, a little scary with the spades, but I go ahead and uh, make a C bet here for $15. In hindsight, I really wish I bet a lot more here to scare off any potential flush draws or anything like that. But um, yeah, ultimately, I do make a pretty small bet and um, it does come back to uh, make us pay later, as you guys will see. But cut off folds and the button calls the $15. We are now headed to the turn, which comes out a eight of spades. And the spade was just an awful turn card for us because uh, spades do now make the flush. Um, really hoping someone might have one spade and they're going to chase the flush and get greedy and miss it. But um, I end up deciding to bet $50 just to kind of test where we're at. And I think I make a huge mistake after this because when I do put out the $50 test, I tell myself, hey, if someone raises, they probably just have it. Um, for some reason, I just don't believe it. Under the gun raises to 150, the button folds and I make the call for 150, uh, which was about 100 bucks more. Um, the pot odds were decent, I believe, but I think based off of the situation on the board, it was a pretty dumb call with just trips. You know, we could improve to a full house, but we don't on the river. It's a five of clubs. At this point, I'm hoping the guy just missed his flush. A lot of things beat us on this board and I'm a little nervous. So I make a block bet here of $125, um, hoping to just get called or maybe induce a fold, but he does snap it off and shows the nut flush and we lose a pretty big hand to end the night, unfortunately. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning into that video. Um, just wanna say I didn't have time to do an outro on that one just because my girlfriend and I were in a bit of a rush to go get some birthday ice cream. And also, um, yeah, the first half of that session or 30 minutes or so was just um, awful. I couldn't even record my whole hands well. It was just a really awkward angle. So I ended up not even including the footage, but we basically made a bunch of uh, pocket pairs and it didn't go too well for us on the flops. So um, yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, thanks again for watching. I started studying more um, things online like GTO Wizard and Crush Life Poker. I got a subscription to that. So I'm taking everyone's advice and studying a lot more just because I'm uh, not happy with how those last few sessions went um, overall. But um, we are doing a lot better now. Um, we are a little bit in the red again for um, the end of May. So hoping June treats us a little better here. And uh, yeah, overall, I think we're making good progress. Um, gonna just keep studying, keep filming as much as I can and keep uh, uploading as much as I can. And uh, hopefully June just treats us a little better overall. But uh, yeah, thanks guys. Appreciate it.